Hey guys, what I've got here is my iPad Pro and it's the one with the M4 chip. And that's worth noting because Apple have announced many new Macs. If you go to the Apple website, you go to Mac, you'll see that MacBook Pro, iMac and Mac Mini, they all have the little new badge because we have new versions. And we've got the new MacBook Pro with M4, M4 Pro, M4 Max. Uh, we've got the new iMax as well, which just looks stunning. I think these look really, really nice. It's just a shame we don't have uh, iMax with, you know, with 27 inch, 32 inch displays, but they look really cool. But the one that caught my eye and the one that I want to talk about today is the Mac Mini. And to me, this is the most interesting. One is because of the price point. Two is because of the footprint. It's just such a small, light device. And three is the performance, the performance of all of these Mac chips. And if I scroll down the page, you'll get an idea of, as to just how good this is. It's got two uh, Type-C ports at the front. We've got headphone jack. And if I scroll down, you can see how small it is. I mean, just look at that. And it's really, really small, 12.7 by 12.7 centimeters. At the back, we have power, ethernet, HDMI, and three Thunderbolt ports. Those will change depending on which, uh, which model you buy. If you buy M4 Pro, those go from Thunderbolt 4 up to Thunderbolt 5. You can also upgrade the gigabit ethernet to 10 gigabit uh, ethernet for 100 pounds, I believe. Um, the other thing which has kind of broke the internet is the design. You've got a new airflow design at the bottom here, but a lot of people aren't happy that the power button is at the back underneath. They're not happy about that, maybe because of their own setup. I guess it's not ideal, but for me, it's not a deal breaker. But just look at how small this is. Now, the reason that this is quite significant, I think, is just because of, well, what it can do. This thing is really, really powerful, this little Mac Mini. I'm currently using a Windows desktop PC. That's my main PC that I use for recording right now and for video editing. It's got an AMD Threadripper 5950X. It's got a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 1390 graphics card. The PC has been amazing. It's not too loud, but it was expensive at the time a few years ago. I mean, I think I spent three or four grand at the time and it's great. It does everything that I need, so I shouldn't be buying anything else, but it has a very large footprint. It's, it takes up a lot of my desk, both horizontally, both vertically, weight as well it's just a big behemoth of a computer to have on my desk and then if you look at what i could potentially replace it with you can see the appeal of something like the mac mini but the the benchmarks out there you'll see a lot of articles out there with benchmarks they do look amazing and if you you know look at any of these articles you'll see graphs and you'll see that the m4 is smashing all the previous m chips and, you know, like the M4 Pro is beating, I believe, the M2 Ultra even, or the M1 Ultra and M2 Max. And these computers were very, very expensive at the time. And now we have potentially, a, you know, a 600 bucks computer, which is beating it. Now, I encourage you to look at all of the benchmarks out there, all of the reviews out there, and look at the different, you know, configurations out there. But I will say, I think for the 600 buck entry point, I don't think there's a computer out there that can beat the Mac Mini today. Now, I know that's a bold statement, but what I mean is 600 bucks, you're not going to get a mini PC at that price that can do what this computer can do to give you that performance, be that small, be that light. You're just not going to get it. And I know there's some, you know, I, I, I use Windows and laptops, desktop, computer, etc. but you can sit there and say, oh, I bought a secondhand gaming PC and it's more powerful. You might be right in that situation, but it's going to be huge. It's going to be noisy. And that's not what we have here. Now, one thing to know is the Apple pricing ladder. And I'm sure you've all heard of this being used by many tech YouTubers, the price ladder or the Apple ladder, Apple pricing ladder. But essentially what Apple do with all of their products, iPads, iPhones, Macs, is they generally make the entry model cheap but they make it highly restrictive. For years, the iPhone had 64 gigabyte of storage as the entry point. 
For years, the Mac and MacBooks and MacBook Airs, they had eight gigabytes of memory. Now, what they've done in this release is ensure that the base has been raised. So the, they've given you 16 gigabyte of memory with the base model and they've upped the MacBook Air, etc., so that that has it as well. I suspect that's because, well, it was time. It was getting ridiculous that it only had eight gigabyte. But maybe Apple's artificial intelligence feature is a factor as well. But that is kind of what they always do. They they make the base model restrictive in some way. And then what they do is they charge an insane amount of money for additional memory and additional storage. And you cannot upgrade the storage or upgrade the memory later. So you have to make a big decision on day one, what you think you will need now, a year from now, three years from now. That's this, the, you know, that's kind of the position that always pe put people in. Now, we've got a lot of different options here, but I've opted for the base model. And I'll, I'll, I'll right off the bat, I did look at lots of different configurations, but I've went, I've went for the base model of six hundred pounds for a few reasons. One being that it's it's a test. I want to use the M4 Mac Mini for a while. I want to migrate my camera applications, DaVinci Resolve. I want to kind of migrate things over and back them up with a time machine and just play around with the Mac to see what it would be like working with a Mac again full time, not jumping in fully. And it gives me a way to experiment with things and see what my requirements will be. I was tempted to opt up the ante though. And I'll show you what happens when you do that and why everyone ends up falling into the Mac pricing ladder because this is what they're genius at with their marketing let's say we start with the base model and this is the one i purchased so you start with this you've got 16 gigabytes of memory 256 gigabyte of storage now one thing to note is with the 256 gigabyte storage is that i believe it only uses one lane or something you kind of have to go up to 512 to get the faster speeds so for 256 gigabyte of storage which should cost like 30 pounds they charge 200. That's you up to 799 already. 16 gigabyte of memory. It might struggle in some professional situations, video editing, audio production. So you can go up to um, 24 for 200. And if you want to go just another 8 gigabyte, the 32, it's another 200 pounds. You want one terabyte of storage? 1399. Look how quickly that price went up £600 to £1,400. Now, I wanted to show you that because it's important to remember that the base model Mac Mini is unbelievable value at 600 But once you start playing that pricing ladder game, once you play that game, you know, the value just isn't there anymore. And now you're at 1399 Well, is it a coincidence? That's the same price as just going for the M4 Pro. And that's the one to go for. If you're going to be spending a grand £1,200, £1,400 on an M4 Mac Mini, you should probably go for the M4 Pro. You get the better CPU, you get the better GPU, just a more powerful machine. You get 24 gigabytes of memory and 512 gigabytes of storage. But here we are playing the game again. Do you want to go up to one terabyte of storage? Now you're up to 1,600. Do you want more than 24? Well, you can't have 32. You have to go up to 48. Now you're at 2,000 pounds. And say you wanted to be closer to a Mac, Mac Studio and have 10 gigabit Ethernet instead of gigabit Ethernet, 2,099. Now, Mac Studio. The Mac Studio is the computer I thought about for the last few years. And it probably is the one that I want to get long term because it's got more ports and you know, it's just more practical, better cooling, better th thermals, etc. It's just more practical for me, for my setup. But look at that, 2099, the same as what I had before with the Mac Mini. And that's the decision you might find yourself in, that you've, you've priced your Mac Mini to the point where you want to have more memory, more storage, but now you are in the world of Mac Studio. Now you're on a different ladder. Now you're pricing up a Mac Studio and they've taken you all the way from £600 up to like three or four grand. And it's that's what they do. But I think we're in a kind of weird situation, a limbo just now, because I think the Mac Mini or the Mac 4, M4 Pro Mini is the one to get for a lot of professionals 
No, because it, it, it's kind of better than M2 chip. But next year we should see the new Mac Studio. So if you can wait six or seven months, there's going to be another powerful Mac Studio out. But that's how Apple get you. That's how they get you to do mental gymnastics. And because you can't upgrade anything, you need to think about what your requirements are. And that's something I do encourage you to do, to, to think about what your requirements are. If you have any kind of computer right now, you ideally want to be testing the apps that you use. Now, it's not always possible if you're at uni or not at uni yet, you might not know what applications you're going to use, but you kind of want to get an idea of what your what apps you're going to be using, how much memory you're going to be using, how much graphics, etc. You want to get an idea of how much resources you need and um, how much you need to be uh, capable of handling. Now, if I like just quickly show you this and show you, let me see, can I get this? Yes, I can get it. I'll show you my Samsung monitor. You can see like there's, there's my, um, my DaVinci Resolve window. And you can see here, I'm kind of using about 16 gigabytes of memory. I usually go up to about 24 some things, but you can see that the GPU there is 50, 60%. That typically isn't as high as that, but I'm recording with OBS just now. But the GPU will go up to 100% when I'm rendering. And my graphics card has 24 gigabytes. And that's one thing to know is that Apple's chipset, I believe the memory changes, it can change between RAM and VRAM, graphics, CPU. And it will just use what it needs. So right now in my desktop computer, I'm using 24 gigabytes in the graphics card, 16 to 20. The system maybe 24. So I kind of need 48 up to 64 memory, 64 gigabytes of memory. That's kind of where I am. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about that is because this is such a big discussion point online about how much memory you need. A lot of people out there don't know what they're talking about. And they're like, you know, you, it, no one needs more than 16 gigabyte. That's not true. There are a lot of people that don't need it. If you've got very basic requirements, you know, shopping online, browsing the web, the base model of the Mac Mini is, is ideal for you. If you're, if you're doing any kind of music production, video production, you know, content creation, any kind of professional work, you do need to start thinking about your memory requirements and your storage requirements. Although storage, you do have some kind of leeway because you can use Thunderbolt for external drives. I have opted for the base model. And it's because of that price ladder. I think the base model offers unbelievable value. Once you jump onto that ladder and you start increasing memory and storage and getting it where you want, well, you've jumped from 600 up to two grand and you'll have a much more capable machine, but you've also paid four times as much. And then at that point, well, you should also consider some options in the Windows world. I went for the base model because it gives me an entry point back into the world of Mac. I've got an iPad here. I've had an iPhone. It's my wife's MacBook Pro. I've had a MacBook Air in the past. I've had an iMac. I have experience with Macs for many years, but I've been using Windows the last few years and all my apps are on Windows. So what this Mac Mini allows me to do is migrate over my OBS settings, my lighting settings, all of these different apps that I use for recording. I can move over DaVinci Resolve. And yes, DaVinci Resolve 4K editing is going to be very, very restrictive on the Mac Mini. I'm hoping that I'm going to be pleasantly surprised. But at the very least, I'm hoping to just migrate over a lot of things. I want to test this new chipset. Obviously, I'm saying all of this as a YouTuber. That's you know what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to test the waters. And the good thing about Apple products is I can buy this Mac for many, you know, 600 bucks. Fast forward six months or a year not going to lose a lot of value on that machine because it's an Apple product because it's still desirable you'll get rid of it and you won't lose a lot of money but I honestly think the, the base Mac 4 mini or the base M4 Mac mini I don't know if I will sell it in the future anyway because it's such a powerful little computer that if I'm not using it as my main computer I'm sure I'll use it for networking I'll use it as a media server I'll use it for storage I'll use it for you know, there's so many things you can do with an old computer and Mac Mini is great for that because 
the power efficient they've got a small footprint i might just stick it next to my tv and have you know use it for plex use it for uh you know apple tv or different things there's just so many things that you can do with a little computer that's powerful i love raspberry pis i love computers that don't use a lot of watts that have got a small footprint and that's that mac mini kind of ticks the box for me kind of like the raspberry pis do which oh i should have really organize this kind of like the raspberry pi here which i've got here this is actually that's the 3b that is the raspberry pi 3b oh sorry that's the 3b i believe this is the newer version that is this is the newer one the raspberry pi 5 and um, so yeah the mac mini is in many ways just an amazing single board computer so i'm really looking forward to trying it if you have not seen it if you've not you know seen all the announcements about it I encourage you to read the Apple page to learn more about the specs. I encourage you to read reviews. I encourage you to check out benchmarks. There'll be a media embargo just now. So in a few days, we'll see reviews where people are talking about thermals and different things. But the early reports are that the new Mac Mini is just amazing from a performance point of view. It's a, oh, I'll get it to the right page. It's amazing from a performance point of view. It's got such a small footprint compared to other computers and for 600 pounds i think an m4 chip with, with 16 gigabytes of memory 256 gigabytes of storage i think that's excellent and yeah i think it ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of people even if it's just a second computer in the house or for testing yeah i think apple have done an amazing job here and it's it's just such a low entry point into the world of mac so i'm really looking forward to trying it for all of you guys um, you know, back into the world of Mac. I still have a Windows computer just now, but I'm really looking forward to getting that. So as always, guys, do your research, look into this yourself, but leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the new MacBook Pro, the new iMacs, new Mac Mini, and what do you think is the best option just now? What do you think is the best computer to buy out of uh, the new Macs? And what do you think is the best configuration? Again, if you're going to be looking at different configurations, have a think about your memory requirements. Have a think about what your apps use. Don't throw money away, but it is dangerous not buying enough memory as well. And Apple know that, hence their insane extortion techniques for pricing. So thanks for watching, guys. I'd love to hear from you on this. And until next time, take care.